even though it's only 6.3 volts, we need to control the noise emission. We have a DC switch, which one of the, as you can see, you follow the red wire, it goes over here to this switch, comes out, and then goes back to uh, on the schematic. It's going to be, in this case, pin 6. Uh, pin 4 and 6 is where these pair of high voltage wires terminate. There it is again, pin 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. So we're coming in on 5 and 6 through this switch. This is this brighter red wire. The AC power comes in on this little jack back here and this is the IDC line cord jack and notate which molded number on the inside says N. N goes straight as the schematic specifies to one side of the input wires which it's hard to see which are uh, these two little guys here and this is something that you're going to end up being familiar with once you get your power transformer. Uh, the yellow wires are the 5 volt filament wires and I wanted you to notice that in here, not a lot of light, but I'll try and show you. Here's my bank of voltage reduction resistors. Uh, I pretty much just glued them to the chassis and I needed to dump it for the 5 volt and the 6.3 volt. Also, here's our, here's our uh, little pilot light here and I actually ran the 6.3 volts right off the back of it. So here's one green wire going right to here. The other green wire goes through this resistor tied at the back and comes back through. These are 0.82 ohm resistors and uh, this is the other winding of the filament. Uh, so goes in comes out and this one over here is terminated directly to the bottom of the light. So across this light I have 6.3 volts at 125 volts in. So also I have as you can see let me get this over here back where it was. I have these two rows of connectors. Uh, they're very handy, very cheap. They're only about a dollar sixty a piece. This gives me uh, one, two, three, four, five, six places, and some of them actually have a ground that comes up in between these that's usable. I'll end up just uh, either running a wire over from my main ground point right now, which is the center conductor, uh, or I'll just go ahead and just take it right off the chassis. If you do take it off the chassis, it's important that you use an external star washer. Uh, which is the UL recommended way to pick up a ground from a chassis that makes sure that it digs in and makes that path uh, along the chassis. Now that breaks a lot of rules for some amp builders uh, but I'll tell you one thing when you turn this thing on and you have your guitar plugged in if you have a high level of hum that's because your wire dressing is not correct. A lot of people can go with a DC filament here that's a project for another time, but you make this a DC voltage and you don't have to twist the wires. But it looks good and it actually works good. Uh, when I first started building amps, I did have a problem with hum. All I did was redress the wires and make sure that they were as close to the chassis as possible. This one here will not hum, I can guarantee. Or I should say it'll be very minimal. So, what my next step is, uh, is now that I have I have plugged in uh, both of these tubes tested the voltage over here with the variac and I saw that at about 117 volts I was at 6.3 well my incoming voltage is 125 so well that's why I had to install these resistors uh, but both tubes were installed and were lit just exactly like I did the 5 volt tube so the process will be that you need to have your variac. You spin it up slowly and as you get up to about 117 volts, this is only with the old transformers. With the newer ones, I think you're going to be okay, I'm pretty sure. Next step is to take off from pin 8 here 
the DC. I'll end up running it over to one of these posts and it'll probably be this side here it will be the positive side and this side they'll all be connected together. I'll end up running my little filter caps in series these I got from Mauser, they're about 60 cents a piece. They're only 10 microfarad, but you can gang them up, and it's a really probably the most economical way to go. Uh, I have some larger ones I may toss in here if I get a hum that I can't deal with. I'll toss maybe a 47, a couple 47s in here. Uh, but I'll have to watch my applied voltage. They're only good for 450 volts. The 500 and 600 volts ones, they go up about $10 a piece where I can usually get the 450 volt ones for about $1.50 for the 47 microfarad jobs. These are the ones that are going to zap you. Uh, I am going to include a 220K resistor across the positive and negative uh, just to make sure that it drains down after a couple minutes. That's not on the schematic yet, but it will be uh, just for this project. So. Let me zoom back and uh, have a look at the exterior. This, uh, this is my rotary switch. In this case, I'm just going to have three positions. One, two, and three. And that'll give me different ways to uh, bias it and different tone stacks to actually tone stack is the wrong word, um, different sounds in the preamp. Um, this is going to be my master volume, this is going to be my pre-volume, and, uh, and this is going to be the treble control. So uh, we have our DC on and off, standby, main power, and the power light. This is the output transformer, this is that little four dollar dude. Four or five dollar, uh, and this is going to be the four to eight ohm switch. I can get a clean sound in eight ohms, or I can get a much dirtier sound in four ohms. So we actually have three positions on the front and two and two positions back here in order to get different kinds of sound. Be a versatile amp and eight water. Uh, so we have our fuse and our line cord, and so that's about it. Um, I ha do have to include screw a hole in here and uh, in include a small little 330 ohm resistor uh, and I'll be mounting in here next to the the 6V6 somewhere uh, somewhere close and then one side will go to ground so I'll just pick it up probably off this bolt right here so uh, that's where I'm at right now um, there's some soldering technique that you'll have to uh, be uh, uh, if you don't uh, think you're a real good solderer uh, after this you probably will I talked to you about applying the solder to the iron uh, keeping it clean and when you're tinning leads to apply the solder to the tip and allow it to flow onto your conductor um, that's a fresh way to do it don't forget the three second rule uh, that is a good way to go um, you shouldn't have any trouble see one more thing I bent these little prongs up on the bottom of the potentiometers you don't want to hinge them at right where they exit you want to bend it in the middle of the lead that way they don't break off where they exit the, the material here um, I think that's about it so this video should be up in a couple days um, right now my my connection is not doing the best but one thing I'm going to go do right now is install and upload that video on YouTube it's ready to go I just have to edit it real quick and uh, should be ready uh, this over here is the input jack by the way <laughs> that's what's missing but uh, I have one by the way where I'm getting my wire is uh, from uh, I think it's Home Depot it's about six bucks for 50 feet and I have let's see here I got a number of colors. This here is a, some really thin coax. Yeah, you'll need some. It's mandatory. So, 
something else that uh, you'll need to find and dig up. I'll try and put a couple links uh, to uh, places to get this. If you live in a large city, you should be able to go to any electronic store and pick this stuff up. It's going to be probably 20 cents a foot. And we'll talk about how to best use that stuff. So that's it. I hope you uh, are enjoying these videos. And I look forward to some more feedback on Cigar Box Nation. Until then, this is Doug Christensen, and I wish you good luck and be safe.